I'm ready. So it's just a, a perfect bodyboarding way. I didn't even jump off my board. I just tried to choke Jason Brown. What's up, everybody? This is Man V, and welcome to another edition of Book Life. And here we are, one o'clock in Australia, eight o'clock here in San Diego. And to make it happen, that's what we have to do. And with me now <laughs> is uh, Clayton Pickworth. Clayton, thank you so much for taking the time, brother. Yeah, thanks, Manny. Thanks for the invite, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, this was uh, this was years in the making. I'm surprised it, it took so long. Yeah, I look, busy lives, busy times, mate. So, um, you know, yeah. there's a lot, lots and lots going on, obviously. And um, yeah, making time, as you said, being halfway across the world, um, yeah. time zones and all the rest of it. Um, but here we are, mate. We're, we're good to roll. Awesome. Uh, wow. It looks beautiful out there as usual. Is it sunny? It is perfect. About 24 degrees today here in Port Macquarie. So um, yeah, it's the, the mornings have been quite fresh here. It's, uh, it's uh, still winter, obviously. So um, we get that morning chill, but um, around sort of 11 o'clock in the morning till about two in the arvos, um, to just primo at about 20, 22 degrees. So yeah, been pretty good, mate. 22 degrees Celsius equals uh, about... 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that about right? <laughs> <laughs> Says he is wearing formula. a hooded jumper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we never learned the formula. I mean, they taught us it, but we we're like, fuck it. We just need to know one thing. We're good. Of course. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> let's jump right into it. Uh, first off, let's, let's get, um, let's get the details on this year's DKS event. Yeah, sure, man. Um, so as you obviously would have realized last year, we had um, our, our biggest year of DKS ever in the history of 20 years. Um, so we had we had the entries open up to 68 riders, and I think we ended up with about 55 in the end. So um, still a pretty good effort from from the guys from um, uh, up and down the coast and over to WA and uh, Victoria and South Oz. Um, and then obviously yourself coming over from overseas, um, but yeah, we're trying to trying to just get that attraction back to traveling again after COVID, and um, trying not to use that as an excuse anymore. Um, people should be should be right on the on the ball now with traveling and getting back into comp life um, out out of their own home um, and stuff like that. So we're trying to get them to come over this year. I know um, we've got Janssen Souza from um, from Maui. I think he's from um, coming over this year, so that's really cool. Um, so hopefully we can drag a few more guys with him. Um, and then we've got um, guys from WA, South Australia, Victoria, um, and then obviously Queensland and New South Wales are, are the bulk of the field again. So we're looking, we, we have left it at the two days. Um, last year went pretty good with um, getting the best conditions first thing in the morning up until around about lunchtime is usually the best bet over here. Um, so we've, we've cut it back to 48 riders this year. Um, and as, as it does, it sort of ebbs and flows every year, as you know, mate. And um, so we'd like to keep the draw as full as, as possible, but then give the guys the most time in the water as they, as they possibly can. So, yeah, going to keep it at that Friday and Saturday time slot still. Um, get down there nice and early when it's um, crisp and offshore. And, um, you know, we make the most of the conditions over those two days. And Port Macquarie. Oh my gosh. Is this the, I mean, if there, I, I stayed there last year and uh, I saw the potential, there wasn't really any waves when I was in that area, but man, that it, if you guys get waves, it's going to be epic. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know, that, that, that little amphitheater for bodyboarding is obviously break wall, you know, um, break wall is the pinnacle for bodyboarding and, you know, the, and we're the bodyboarding capital of Australia, so to speak. So, um, and break, having break wall there is we really want to try and get that on this year as, you know, as much as we can. Um, but yeah, as last year, you've seen lighthouse, um, is, um, is such a good world-class beach break as well. So yeah, look, we're, we're at the mercy of the, the weather gods, obviously every year, but, um, yeah, hopefully this year we can, you know, we can get some pretty good waves and, um, yeah, it just makes that that much more spectacular for the guys and um you know we get obviously good footage and photos and everything out of it as well to really sort of post and express what we do here at dks and that's just to give you guys the best time um you know over the weekend that are possible and um it's just you know such such a good thing to have everyone getting together again once a year and um yeah hopefully as i said try and get some more travelers back and um yeah we'll just you know we'll just keep on keeping on mate <laughs> 
Yeah, no, what you did last year was the perfect formula. I mean, um, drop nears for one, they they're, you know, they're all about just getting together and having a good time as a group of friends. And, yeah. uh, the contest is kind of like bonus on top of that. And what you organized was, was really cool. Just these, uh, these couple of days of get together, uh, you know, the after event or after the, yeah, the after the event, you had something organized and it was, to me, that was, that was gold. And, uh, and you and your team did an incredible job of putting everything together. Every drop near that I talked to, I'm like, please put this on your bucket list. Cause, um, you know, he, he, he's been at it for 20 years. There's something happening to make it last this long, but you know, it may not happen for 40 or 50 years. So do it while you can. And in fact, a book life patron, Trevor uh, Solberg, he is a drop near and I'm like, dude, you got to get out there. Just, uh, just go. Yeah. And I promise you, you'll have a good time. And then he wrote back. Uh, yeah. He's looking into flights yeah. <laughs> possibly next year. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, and we're, and we're more than happy to, to work with the guys that are looking to come over as well, Manny. And, you know, like, um, you know, in, in regards to flights, travel accommodation, you know, how to get from A to B, you know, that's you experienced it last year, how the, you know, the, um, you know, the patronage of Don McCready, you know, um, just bang, here's a car, man, off you go, you know, like, you know, it's all there. And um, we just need you guys to reach out basically and, you know, ask for a bit of help, ask for some ideas, um, you know, and I'm dealing with Janssen at the moment, um, you know, trying to get him a place to stay nice and close to where we were here last year, Manny. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's quite good, you know, obviously really, really close to the coastline and access to the roads up and down in between Lighthouse and Town Beach um, and in towards the city centre. So, um, yeah, look, if you guys want to reach out at any time, jump on the website, send me an email, send me a Facebook messenger, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter as long as you're getting in contact and we can start chatting and then work stuff out of how to get you guys over here and experience um, DKS. Yeah. I mean, again, I tell people all the drop nears um, to, to figure out how to make it happen. And so with the draw at 48, you are planning to, and this was another cool thing about it is just putting them out in the morning in the best conditions and having the rest of the afternoon to do the cool, fun gathering stuff. Um, and you're planning that again this year. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It's, so it hasn't really changed. So when when it all first sort of started, um, I, I I put it. I just put a, a drawer out, and everyone came and enjoyed themselves. But after, you know, once once we sort of get together and we we start chatting and, and throwing ideas around, have a couple of beers and relax and talk. I really sort of turn things around to say, look, well, this is this is not my contest. This is a contest for you guys to come in and do what you want to do. And that is express yourself and DK and get together and have a, you know, just a, a general catch up and um, you know, have a good weekend. So from there, it was like, okay, what sort of draw do you want? Let's talk draws. Let's talk, you know, it's going to be a contest regardless at the end of the day. Someone's going to come out on top. Um, everyone's going to participate. So let's have that in the best possible waves you know, that we can um, with what we have on, on the day. So, um, you know, we can throw different hundreds of different drawers around that suits uh, anyone. Um, and a lot of the good feedback that I got from uh, a fair few of the guys is that, you know, time in the water is, is the main thing. So even if we ran, you know, the first round, um, you know, all seeded through all that sort of stuff, we still ran the first round and then had a repercharge round, which basically gave the guys that second chance in the water. It gave them more time, it, you know, value for money and all that sort of stuff. So we really like to keep pushing that. Um, we, I'm always getting feedback, you know, on different draws and how to how to try different things. And that's what we do. We, that's how we, we've lasted 20 years is try something as fresh as possible as we can. Um, keep that feedback coming from the riders and as to what they want, what they like. And, um, you know, look, and this year is no different and we're going to create a, um, a total different atmosphere. I can't let too much out at the moment, but, um, you know, we're always trying to throw something different down on the beach other than just the tent and a marquee and the timer and off we go. Um, so we, we try and make it a, a exclusive um, and inclusive as possible um, by just trying to different things at the time and yeah sometimes they work sometimes they don't so you know we we sort of um you know mark a few of those things off as we go along but um 
yeah, look, the, the guys are just happy to, to come and, and chill, be together, be in a, an environment of DK is where we can all be on the same level. Um, even when we had Roach and Dub and, you know, Aiden Cleave over from South Africa and, you know, Yuki from Japan and Ken from Japan and, and all these riders that come from all around the world to come and experience this, we're all on the same level. It doesn't matter where we're from. And that's the beauty of it. And that's why it's lasted so long, I, I think, is, um, you know, having that, still having that contest progressional draw in place, but sort of tweaking it up a little bit in the end to, to really, you know, give the guys what they want to, you know, have at a contest. I mean, it, it, it takes somebody, not just anybody, you've been at it for 20 years. So it, it, not anybody can do that. I mean, you're obviously an exception of all contest organizers to be able to uh, not only ask for the feedback, but also implement some of the ideas that the writers are asking for. And that is, uh, you know, that's gold. Let's backtrack a little bit what started it like what was the initial idea and how did you come up with it or was it a team how did that first uh, idea of dks come about oh, i love that question um obviously because you know it's a it's my pride answering this this question and um so back in uh, 1996, 97 region, um, I, I was approached by a mate of mine here in Port Macquarie, Wayne Hatfield, who was um, judging with Craig Haddon. Everyone knows Craig. Um, there was a pro contest in town, Australian Pro Tour in town over at Northwall. Um, Wayne come to me and just sort of grabbed me on the shoulder and said, you're coming and judging this event with us. And I said, well, I've got no idea. And he said, doesn't matter. We'll get you in there. We'll do the course. And that, at that time, Craig was running a level one international bodyboarding judging course. So attended the event, did the course after the first day, second day of the event, and off we went. So from there on in, judging just became like a bit of a norm for me. You know, I was jumping on as many panels as I could. But from there, that's what this is where DKS came in. And over, over that sort of six-year period um, up towards the start of the 2000s we had the aussie tour had massive numbers it was it was booming like we had a maxed out june pro junior draw at 96 kids um we had you know the hardys the rawlands the ben players the tobies like we had andrew lester we had all the pro guys from australia that everyone grew up with and everyone knows competing on the on the australian pro tour it was massive but the DK guys were just like, they were, they were growing, man. And they were right there with them. Um, Grant Maloney, Jake Sharp, Matt Klimowitz, Daniel Coy, we had Joel Maley, Kim Feast, you know, the bucket loads of, of riders from all around the States. And I started to see them fade, fade off a little bit mentally. And just, you could just see them being over it, being over the contest scene and traveling and spending their money because basically at that time, and, it, and it's no, no offense to anyone when I say this, but it just, it's just how it was, is that the pros got put out in the good stuff, the DKs got put out in the shit stuff. And, 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 I'm, and I say that, as I said, that, that was just how it was back in the day. But, you know, it turned, it turned the, the tide when the DKs stood up and sort of went, well, how can, why do we get the short end of the stick? We're paying the same entry fee. We're we're paying the you know we're accommodation. We're paying the fuel money and and all this stuff to travel, like everyone else. So and it's a hard gig to try and put you know who out when and I get all that. But so I caught up with a few guys, um, Pete Garrity, like Ghetto back in the day, and Grant and and Jake and that, and just sort of went, well, what's the answer? What do we do here? How how do we not lose you guys? Because you know it was such a healthy part of the sport and we'll and the guys were absolutely tearing the bag. And came up with the idea of, well, we're not, we just don't want to go out in shit, high tide, fat, onshore all the time. And I said, all right, well, what, hap what would we, you know, how can we make it work where you guys get put out in the best conditions all the time? DKS, that's where it all came from. And it was just do our own thing. Um, so 2001 was that discussion on the pro tour um, at the time. And that's when, yeah, I just went, okay, how do I do it? I researched it. How do I get insurance? How do I run a contest? Um, and that sort of stuff to make it happen. 2002 was the first ever event. I put it together in December. 
um, 2002. Breakwall was the was the um, was the venue at the time. Uh, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Went out and found some sponsorship. Got asked the Port Macquarie Bodyboard Club if I could borrow some tents and the timer and stuff like that. And um, 6 a.m. in the morning, we flicked the timer on and off we went. And, you know, as I say, the rest is history. But um, that was a massive, massive turning point uh, for me, um, I think, for the sport, if I can say that um, in, in that way. But uh, also, it, it just gave these guys a, a, a total different aspect on the sport and how they can just run things the way they would like it to be run. Um, they get their own contest, they get their own time in the water, they get their own draw. They, everything is for the rider. It's not me. It's I'm just lucky enough to be able to do what I do for these people. Um, and that's the beauty of it. That's what I get out of it. The guys that come to the event and the girls, the guys and girls that come to the event, um, they get out of it what they want to by being here and being in a good mental space um, and just being around like-minded riders and people. And then that's... That's what's been really cool about it, to be honest. So, um, yeah, a bit of a history there, but um, I, I kind of love telling that story because, um, yeah, not not many people know how that sort of came about back in the day. Well, uh, congratulations. You're 20 years in and it's still going really strong. And, uh, yeah, congratulations. Thanks, man. That first event, I mean, at the end of the day, um, what, what, what were you guys talking about? Let's do one more or let's – how do oh, we do better – yeah, man, though it was because it was only a one day event. We had I had 48 riders in the draw. I ended up having 55. I had to knock so many people. I had to knock seven people out of the draw because I just couldn't fit it into the one day contest. Um, oh, damn. It, the funniest part was Dwayne McGlinchey, Kim Feast, Mike Dobson, Joel Maley, and Tao Wu all jumped in a station wagon and drove from WA to Port Macquarie. So they drove 4,000 kilometers for a one day event that had never, ever taken the water in the history of DKS. This was the first event. And they're like, yep, let's go bang. We're in the car. We're, we're doing it. We're going there. And um, they were all part of the very first event that we ran on the And mate, I was like a cooked lobster at the end of the day. I had no sun cream on because I was just running around, putting tents up, getting the draw going, getting the judges going, getting people in the water, rash shirts. It was just a crazy, crazy time. And um, uh, we're, we're very blessed, um, as as you probably remember from last year, mate Crispin Hughes was the inaugural inaugural winner, winner of the event. Um, and oh. that really shows to me the commitment from the DK community, um, how many insane riders we've had just at this event. Um, and then from, as to answer your question, but from there, it was like at the Prezzo, you know, it was, it was the biggest buzz you know, guys are on the beers, they'll chat and they'll laugh and they'll high five and they'll, when's the next one? When's the next one? What are we going to do next? You know, where are we going? So um, many, many emails after that was, <laughs> yeah, how do we do it? Well, you know, where do we go elsewhere? Do we keep it in Port Macquarie? What do we do? Um, but yeah, no, I think um, obviously having it here in Port is um, a lot easier for me to organise, um, but I can uh, just sort of offer so much more being in your hometown um and sort of as we've done over the years really sort of mixed it up and bought good artwork in with Cy and um the t-shirt printing with black dog and all that sort of stuff and the little trinket stuff that you know um we've collected over the years by people uh, donating and and you know jumping on board and helping out whenever they can um a la the little lovely singlet you're wearing today this but, is um, the best. Uh, yes, thank you so much <laughs> But um, yeah, we can do those sorts of things. And, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm most proud of really is um, just giving back as much as I possibly can. Have you guys ever thought about doing a series? So mid, mid 2000 and oh, six, seven around that sort of period. Um, my first ever major sponsor was a mate of mine, Simon Luke from this, the Breakwall Caravan Park back in the day. And he acquired a second property down in Pacific Palms in Foster um, called Tiona Park. So obviously he's like, we've got to drag these guys down here and, and you know, have them stay at the park. And that was the year that Roach came over, the first year that Roach um, made the um, trip through uh, Glenn and Greg Taylor through Turbo and Cartel, their, their, their um, partnership at the time. 
Um, so we've got, we got Roach to come over and, and do the Tiona Park event down in Foster. Um, so we had, we had a two, two, um, two event series going on there for a couple of years um, until Simon ended up um, parting ways with the Caravan Park and stuff like that. And we went back to one event in Port Macquarie. But, um, but yeah, funnily enough, the stuff that people don't see hit the table because they never happen. Um, we had a four, four event East Coast series planned from right up towards the Queensland border all the way right down to the New South Wales South Coast in Kiama. Um, so we had, which, which basically the idea is pretty simple. We had so many international guys coming out to compete. We needed more than one or two events to make their trip worthwhile. Um, when Bard and Micah and Colin Black came out and all that sort of stuff, we had, you know, two events going for them. So they could, you know, the, the money they were spending on flights and accommodation was, was worth it because they could check the coastline out in between the two events. They had that five-day window where they can go and explore and travel and, and check out other beaches and stuff like that. So, um, and they had a good time in Sydney, down around Sydney, Cronulla area and stuff like that, um, you know, which is it just made their, their trip so much more enjoyable and, and worthwhile um, being away from your family and, and friends, you know, many as um, you do traveling around, it's, it does take its toll. So um, yeah, we, we had that sort of pump in there for a couple of years. And then um, yeah, obviously um, we had a bit of a hiatus after 2010, just due to my personal reasons and work and family stuff. And then, you know, and yeah, we're back big, bigger and better than ever now, but yeah, look, we're always looking to expand, to I think different surf breaks. I think everyone's sort of not not over Port Macquarie, but they they certainly are, um, yeah they they're, they're looking to to take it to a different sort of break and or a reef break or something like that, and, um, which we're looking into. Um, we are looking into that next year and and possibly the year after that as well. I mean, it's so hard to leave Port because you have it all. You have everything yeah. within <laughs> walking distance. You have yeah. a pretty cool place to explore and walk around. The beaches are amazing and, um, uh, and the beer is good. And yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it's, it, I can understand it's hard to leave, but, uh, but I get yeah. people's, um, you know, want to go try something else, but man, you're always going to be solid at port. Um, yeah. So, uh, I was going to ask you a question about, um, the, oh yeah. So when you were talking about Kim Feast and the crew coming over from WA last year, oh my gosh, this somebody jumped in their car and drove for, I don't know how many hours and got there like, you know, the night before his heat went out and gosh, who was it? I think he drove the furthest from, was it uh, Adelaide? Maybe it was, Not, Sun, was it Sunshine Coast? Gosh, I don't, they drove all night or they drove all day maybe a day and a half to get to the event. And I remember them going straight out. Oh, no. I think it was the guys from Vico. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she and that drive up from Victoria. Yeah. Those guys were that like, does. when they told me how far <laughs> they drove, I'm like, holy. Yeah. But I, get I usually it. fly. I, yeah. But I, I, I get it because, you know, what they're about to experience for the next couple of days happens once a year. So why yeah. wouldn't you? And I, I told yeah, you. they did a road trip. I remember coming up through the Great Ocean Road and then coming up to the comp through Sydney. Yeah, Mad yeah, dogs. yeah <laughs> you got something. You got something special there for people to drive. All yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, awesome. So you said you had something that um, you have planned this year that you may not want to talk about. Um, yeah, okay. Let's bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, <laughs> well, look, we might as well get it out there look and, and it's and it's very the last 12 to 24 months is um like personally uh outside of dks um with my my line of work and and just the the port macquarie uh slash war hope community that i that i live in um i've started to sort of evolve myself into um a good mental health space um now that's through a, a um a local a couple of local guys here in Port Macquarie who started up a company called Self Scene. So what that is is a it's a men's group um, which is uh, non for profit. Uh, it's all social aspect where, where the, the guys aren't they're not psychologists they're not the be all and end all of mental health. They're just guys going through a hard time um, or have been through a pretty hard and rough trot in their life they want to they want to make things better and it's it's evolving around meeting up at uh down at uh, southern shelley's beach here in port macquarie every sunday morning 
And it's basically just a get together, uh, seven o'clock in the morning, come down to the beach, have a bacon egg roll, a quick chat. We go for a walk up the end of the beach and back day done. Okay. So it's basically just that a, a reset, a refresh for the start of the week, um, heading into, you know, kicking off on Mondays and stuff like that. And so from there, I've, I've evolved myself into, um, you know, the, the peer support and mental health space in my, in my work as well, um, which supports you know, anyone that has tr- been exposed to traumatic issues. Um, and we all know that this is a huge space just in life in general at the moment. So what I've asked the self scene crew to do is to come down uh, both days to set up their tent um, and create a good mental health space. Now, I've totally left it up, the ideas up to the, the self scene guys, um, but at the moment they're going to create a, um, you know, bean bags down underneath the tent to chill out with some nice music. Um, you know, there's water, there's fresh fruit, there's all the good things that, that is required to just be, just sort of block yourself out for a minute. Just come and sit down if you want to have a chat to them. As I said, they're not, they're not registered psychologists or anything. They're just guys that have that have gone through a tough time and they want to make things better for other people as well through their own experience. Um, and I think uh, moving forward after last the last few events that we've had here on the coast in, in um, on the east coast here in Australia with the Jeff Wilcox and um, other events like that that we've been to, just going down there, putting a tent on the beach where that's that's a space for them to do, to to be able to go and put their board and their families and their kids and and just come and chill out for a little while and sort of reset and gather their thoughts, have a chat to someone and, and open up if they really want to is um, it just makes so much of a difference. And I think we've, we've really, we have been doing that at DKS anyway, but just not in the professional sense, so to speak, as putting it out there. Um, so this, this will be a bit of a game changer um, where we will have a dedicated space for mental, good mental health um, yeah, as I said, they can come in, they can chill on a bean bag, they can have a chat to the guys. And we're even going to get um, a couple of massage therapy tables in there. So if, you know, come and just before you heat, have a shoulder rub down and, and just sort of, you know, de-stress for a minute or, or whatever. It doesn't matter when, anytime throughout the contest, you can come and do that. So that's um, it's just something that I've been wanting to do for a little while now, but um, didn't know how to go about it. And you know what the set what the good setup was for that so the self scene guys have been unreal and they're going to be all over it this year so look forward to that one that sounds amazing uh yeah great job and um i mean covid did a really no- a good number on a lot of people uh mentally and um and w- we don't see that in the news uh, uh that's on top of our daily you know crap that we have, whether it's just, uh, whether it's a lot of work, you know, family life, just a lot of other things on top of what everybody in the world had to do for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So now is a perfect time. And I, you know, that is something super solid to, to add to the, to the event. And uh, yeah, that's mm. sounds pretty amazing. Good job. Yeah, uh, Thanks man. Hopefully we can be a bit of a leader in that, that space, you know, and, and some other contests pick it up and sort of, you know, expand on it and do their own thing um, in that mental health space because, um, you know, everyone everyone goes through it. It doesn't matter whether you think you have or not. Everyone goes through something at some stage. It's just realizing um, how to go, how to go around, you know, get around it. Like I'm, I'm doing sauna and ice baths at the moment. That's in breath work. That's that's working for me. May not work for others. So mm-hmm. you've got to really sort of, unfortunately, get get uncomfortable. And get out, get out there, and sort of see what's good for you. Yep, yep. Well, I'm stoked to to hopefully see some of that uh, video footage come out yeah. after the event. That'd be cool to see for the crew sure. there. Um, so, I know you're working event per event, but do you have an outlook to the future? Like, do you see DKS 30 being in Hawaii, or what? Like, do you? look beyond the event you're working on yeah 100 percent. it's there's as i say those those ideas are flowing quite regularly you know like a six pack of beer um they you know they something always gets opened up and talked about somewhere along the line um yeah we've talked about an urban surf dks we've talked about you know um the, the south coast mission you know um the connections that we have with with jace at the sws down in the in Ulladulla region and uh wollongong region 
you know, there's, there's so many things we can do. It's a matter of um, just me getting my ass into gear, basically, and and making it happen. Um, who knows, Manny? It could be, you know, 25 years could be Carbo, you know. Um, you know we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, things like that. But that, those things, as I say, it's it's what the guys can, um, you know, and want to put forward. Um, and, mate, if throw you know throw the ideas at me i'll make it i'll make it happen and um yeah, yeah but then i'll keep doing yeah you know, i'll be doing this for as long as i possibly can until I, I physically can't do it it's just it's what i like to do it's what i want to be remembered for it's what the legacy i've been building over the last 20 years is it, it hasn't just sort of you know it's just popped up it's just made its own way there and i've just sort of been there for the ride so um why not keep it going why why stop now it's um you know, I, I did have that little hiatus there where I had to have a break. It, it really sort of got to me. Um, and I needed to, yeah, sort of just get back into the swing of things with life and family and stuff like that. So, um, you know, but now I'm in a pretty good position where, where I know that we can sort of take it to the next level and, you know, do something totally different in within the next uh, few years. So, yeah, we're definitely looking at a fair few ideas. As I said, want to make that urban surf one happen the guys are pumped on that they want to get out and that left and right down in melbourne um and then it's quite easy it's good access it's right near the airport there's accommodation you know it's quite pretty much like poor you know it's too easy to sort of organize so um yeah we'll definitely look into that one and then um yeah south coast is is definitely on the cards i think for for the next few years has the idea and um this is just uh I'm just listening to you and thinking at the same time, because Chris Wantaloa had DK Wars. It was just a super uh, blank sheet of like, hey, get everybody together. You guys put in money for a barbecue and a pot. You guys watch each other. Whoever did the best, take whatever's left in the pot, and then we have a barbecue after. It was a super easy template. Anybody can do it. Um, is there a future where you're going to be able to um, – I guess, sell the package of DKS uh, or like put together a model for, for instance, uh, you know, myself or any drop near in Europe or anywhere in the world to say, okay, yeah, this is an official DKS event where we're abiding by these certain, you know, uh, not rules, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, things that to make it uh, a DKS. I mean, have you guys thought about something like that as well? Um I've been pretty blessed with the people that I've had along the ride with me. Um, uh, you know, as I said, Mezza Black Dog is the absolute wizard when it comes to printing. Um, Cy is, a, you know, he's the best artist I've had on board. Um, he's just, I, I don't even have to tell him an idea. He just comes up with it every time and nails the brief. Um, you know, and and the guys that come and help out every every year are just phenomenal, and and that's the, and they're competing as well. You know, there's there's heaps of them. There's way too many to name, but there's we've got a pretty core cool crew, and I think um, to yeah to answer your question, yes, there's there's definitely some answers we can give to people that uh, are interested that that can't make it here for whatever reason, and but they would like something like this where they live um so definitely we can have a chat about that um you know because the the branding as you know manny is is it has to be that it has to be that good brand that we've created over the years and we sort of um yeah need need to nail that down um, wherever we go and what we do so um so it's so it makes it easy to sell you know that's the whole idea is to make things easy so um yeah we can definitely talk about that i, I to tell you the truth no i haven't i haven't even crossed that path yet um because i think people like chris you know and and yourself and others that you know are doing such a good job with what you're doing at the moment that um you know it seems to be flowing pretty well but um yeah there's definitely i know that i know that wonton didn't really kind of like my idea of, of the contest side he wanted it to be sort of like more free surfing and stuff like that which is you know um yeah, absolutely great. You know, it was you know, one of the best ideas when, especially when so many people were going to Hawaii and surfing off the wall all the time and just absolutely tearing the bag outside of the, the pipe contest window. Um, so, and that was that was a good gathering of all the, all the guys to just come and do that. Um, so, hundred percent, yeah. That I think that 
um, certainly needs to keep keep going. That's for sure. Um, DKS wise, yeah. Look, you know, we can, as I said, we've got a hundred draws we can go through and um, and do with anyone who's interested. And but yeah, definitely that that brand and um, how we how we put it out there is um, probably the only thing that I'd be I'd sort of worried about. But um, Michelle, we could yeah we could work in with anyone that's interested for sure. Yeah, no, I totally understand. And uh, yeah, you worked so hard to get it to this point, and yeah, to keep it at that level is totally understandable. But uh, I mean, yeah, I- I'm sure you've heard this idea and a ton of other ideas, and we can sit here all night uh, discussing each one of them. But yeah, you got something really solid here, and I saw it firsthand last year. So uh, just keep doing what you're doing, and yeah, I think. Um, where it will end up is where I'm sure you're going to direct it to the right place. But yeah, I mean, there's so many, I'm just saying this because there's so many riders out there that would love to experience the DKS, um, you know, experience itself. Uh, But for whatever reason they're they can't get there for that year. Um, Yeah. yeah, So, but it doesn't mean they can do next year, like our friend Trevor, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Trevor, who knows? I may, may join you. I really want to get back to that event. Um, and, and we talked about it too. Why don't I organize a Epic surf tours DKS trip where yeah, sure. people don't have to worry about it. Just here's what you got to pay show up at the airport. We'll take care of everything else. So maybe we'll put that in the cards. Uh, do you usually have it hmm. around this uh, time of the year? Yeah, it's, it's, it's usually the same time every year, but um, sometimes in uh, when you have to deal with the local council and bigger events that come to to Port Macquarie at different times of the year, um, I try and obviously stay outside of that. Um, I, I don't like to have it when school holidays are on for obvious reasons. We've got you know bucket loads of people that come to the town and the accommodation prices and everything go up. So we want to keep it as cheap as and friendly as possible. So we we try and operate outside of the regular hours to so to speak yeah. um and, and but usually around sort of august september region we find is this around a uh, pretty good time for port um and you know like port's good for waves pretty much year round but in that sort of winter end of winter type period i think we get some pretty good conditions so um and and you know like there's not as many people in town so the opportunities for for people to come and you know do it on a, on a pretty decent budget is is right up there so um yeah definitely you know we can as i said before if if, if we can sort of talk back and forth with anyone that's willing to to get some money together and, and make the trip well you know we can we can help certainly help from our end over here with accommodation prices and places and things like that put together some packages and talk to some people so um, you know, and, and we get, we get pretty good flights that come into Port Macquarie as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's all there. We just got to nut it out. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. The drive from uh, Port Macquarie down to Sydney wasn't too bad. Um, no, it was only four, it's only four hours now, so it's not, not overly bad. Um, and, and international flights, I think there's some that can even go into Newcastle now, um, which is only two hours away. So it's, that's hard the, the drive as well. So, um, but as I said, like if I know that, you know, half a dozen or whatever riders are coming from a certain spot and they're all on the same flight and grab a mini bus and I'll come pick his up and I'll drive his home, you know, like <laughs> it's, yep. Not, yep. it's all there. It's quite easy, but it's just, as you say, putting that package together, making sure everyone's in the same spot at the same time, jump on the bus, you know, you guys can relax. You don't have to do anything. I'll drive his up and, you know, and, you know, we'll go from there and you straight to your accommodation, all that sort of stuff. So. Um, yeah, definitely there. Just have to, yeah, as I said, it's just a chat back and forth and getting it organized. Um, so yeah, if anyone is listening and they want to, they really want to do this event and come and experience it, get some people together, kind of get a bit of a crew and, and, um, and it makes it just a lot, a lot fun to travel and cheaper and, um, we can organize a lot better for you. Okay. So September 8th and 9th is this year. There's still time for people to show up as, and you still have spots available. Yep. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely, what I'm going to do with this uh, interview is yeah. Book life is a paid subscription, but these types of interviews, I'm going to put it up as a free interview so people can, you know, hear the history and um, you yeah, know, sure. hear it from um, you know, yourself on why people should go there, but yeah, September 8th and 9th, t- totally time for you to, you know, pull a trigger and head out there. Um, 
And then as soon as you find out the 2024 dates, let me know. And uh, sure. we'll definitely, because I miss it. I, I would, I want more meat pies. I want more. <laughs> um, just, early swims. Yeah. The early <laughs> swims. Yeah. So all of it. Uh, so yeah, let me know as soon as uh, the 2024. Yeah, but, for sure. Um, so yeah, Trevor, I think we're going to Australia next year, but, um, yeah. but yeah, I appreciate, um, you know, everything. Let me show you guys, uh, the website here and then we can, uh, do a quick, uh, here, right here by the website, by the way, the website's pretty dope. So yeah. Yeah. So this, this is run by one of our contestants, uh, Justin Welsh down in Victoria. So now living down on Phillip Island, um, yeah, he's he's been he's been one of the original dudes that's um and he's just he does this just for the love and and the help you know and that's what that's what DKS has sort of evolved from. Everyone's just jumping in, doing what they can with the skills they have, um you know. And Justin does digital marketing and stuff and has done for a very very long time. And he just went, look, man, you just throw me throw me the ideas, I'll I'll make the website happen. So. Um, you know, and then we've got obviously Steve who's set this, this podcast stuff up here on our end from Silver uh, Quinn Productions. Love that guy. Um, love you, Steve. Comes and yeah, <laughs> he, um, you know, opened his house up to us last year and, and himself, Manny. And, um, you know, he, he does all the video and, um, production work, um, backend stuff and, um, you know, the social media stuff and everything. And, you know, there's guys like Matt Brocky who puts together, when, when we do a post on Instagram or stuff there, there's the template. That's, that's all his work. Um, all the graphics and artwork on down on the bottom here is uh, through the Instagram posts and everything down as, on the bottom of the screen there. That's all Brocky stuff. Um, yeah, just people just do what they can. And that's the best thing. It's not all me. It's, it's, um, you know, I'm putting myself out there as the face of it and, um, and, you know, sort of putting it all together, but there's so many people behind the scenes, um, you know, Trevor Ross, you know, I, I, I won't sort of go too far in. I know he doesn't like to be mentioned, but you know, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's so many people that I, I need to be very, very thankful for to, um, to get this looking like what it is. And, and what happens on the day, obviously is, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's well worth it. Yeah. I, there's a, there's a, there's a few drop nears that are coming to mind right now. And uh, Araya Dablano from uh, Kauai. She's a young, I think she's 16 or 17, just yeah, nice. destroys it. So definitely we'll send this out to her. I think she may be going, she's on the verge of uh, being one of the youngest um, US, US born world champions. So wow. um, I think she's That's pretty epic. Focused. Yeah, it's uh, going to be pretty exciting in it. I think it, it's going to be determined in um, in France, I believe, uh, there's a couple okay. more events for her, but she's a drop knee Sick. master at that age. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely That's somebody so that should be at this event, if not this year, next year, but, um, yeah, and we, we've, we've almost, yeah, we almost had Evelyn Mussey here as well. Um, she's down, uh, I think on this Northern beaches, I think. Um, and we, and she did, she DKs as well. And, just kills it so um we had her up here for the team's challenge one year and uh, winning the dk against the blokes and um let me tell you she didn't come last put it that way um, oh damn she, she kicked some butt so there's definitely some some riders that we want to want to involve here on this scene that's for sure <laughs> to mix things up a bit <laughs> yeah like, yeah well um that us so yeah. Again, let me know what's going down in 2024. Uh, we'll definitely yeah. pump this up uh, to try to get more people to this eighth and ninth. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, thank you so much for taking the time and uh, yeah, cheers, I'm always open. So if you, we missed something, uh, if you want to chat more, we can do another um, quick, quick chat, but uh, yeah, if yeah. there's anything I left out, please, by all means, uh, give me a shout. Yeah. Well, um, just like going back to the, the website real quick, um, you obviously see there that when you scroll down the, the link for the, um, for the entry forms and stuff like that, um, everything's on there. So um, when, you, when you jump in, there's, you, you can pay internationally. You know, there's um, all the codes and everything there that need to be, you can pay like international and all that sort of stuff is all on there. Um, yeah, and... And Who's even even there? further down on the website too, there's um there's the sponsors package and stuff like that. If you if you um 
if you know of anyone who wants to be a part of, uh, yep, right there, the sponsors package. So it's all there for you. It's all open. It's no, there's no secrets. There's nothing hidden. It's all there in that package. If you know of anyone who's willing to support the event at any stage, it doesn't have to be this year. It could be next year or the year after. Um, we're always have that package together and, um, you know, we're, we're very, very thankful for the people that support us every each and every year. And um, we always have new people coming on board as well, um, which is great. So um, yeah. They're the only other couple of things I just quickly wanted to mention. Yeah, this is awesome. Let me, um, I don't know if you can see the, but everything here, I, I have the the entry form right here. Uh, yeah. Man, who's, yeah, so it's pretty who, straightforward. Who designed this though? I'm looking at the design. So that's Matt Brocky as well. Damn. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So last year's winner, Dane Pope on the, on the top there. And then. Oh my um, God. He's, he rips. Yeah. Yeah, he was really so humble. Last year. Yeah, I know. Such a cool dude. And then he again, one of the original guys that came to the very first event. Um, and then has never ever won. And 20 years later he wins, you know what I mean? So oh, it's it's right. We just just keep creating such good history with this event. And um, you know, it's such a hard event to win. I mean, I, I keep yep. digging. Dave Hubbard in the ribs and people like that saying, Hey man, you've won a world title, but you haven't won a DKS. Oh uh, yes. You know what? I'm going <laughs> to dig on him too. <laughs> so, you Maybe know, there's it. always that little dig in the ribs and, uh, yep. you know, to say, Hey man, you got to come back and, and try and, uh, try and win this thing. So, yeah. um, has he yeah, showed no, up to we, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, back in 2006, I think it was. Um, when That's we right. had absolutely pumping lighthouse, man, it was so good. And he didn't um, win. And it. I think Mason Rose won that year. And, um, oh, my Dave Ballard's been, you know, like that. We've had so many good names. And, um, you know, it's, it's that hard to win this event. It's, it's just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling Trevor, um, yeah, this is like imagine a beach with, you know, 40 to 50 to 60 of your, uh, your, fellow drop nears it's it was yeah. so amazing and so cool to see um these guys you know all we're all uh, part of the same tribe and that was the best yeah, yeah, yeah. that was one of the best parts and, yeah and that, and that's the best thing mate it's as i said right back at the start it's just people just coming together with the same common goal and and they just they're just the love of the name mate and um yeah, most of them don't even give a shit about the contest, to be honest. <laughs> they, um, they're just happy to make a heat or just be out there like, you know, like Michael Casaldini last year, who was in your heat, you know, posting on in the internet, like how good I was in, you know, I was against Manny last year, blah, 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 what a dream, you know. Again, it's just, you know, guys that can can have that experience by just coming here, it's it's unreal. And, um, you know, who knows, you know, they could even win the thing. They could beat one of their childhood heroes. You know, it's, it's all there. It's um, you just got to come and do it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I had a, a really good time interviewing the, gosh, the whole crew was there. The, yeah. Scotty kitchen, uh, yes. Levi, Levi Frangos, yeah. all the sunny coast boys out the side here. <laughs> that, was <laughs> that was so fun. I think, um, uh yeah oh, we'll we'll just leave it at that let's leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show uh yeah. there was one other thing so this is not your full-time job oh no i'm a, I'm a fiery so i'm a yeah craig Haddon again um thanks craig for uh really pushing me to get into the fire brigade um so yeah i'm fiery by fiery by day dks by night so uh, <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's it's a good mix because it's such a good lifestyle and um and and the work the work I do is um very community orientated so um it just sort of suits suits me and uh, I love doing it and I love doing DKS and that's why I'm here so um get on that bloody website and get get an entry form and get over here. There you go. All right, thanks, brother. You. All right, I'll work, see. Uh, you. Yeah, I'll send you all the information and. Um... And thank you too for uh, making it happen. Yeah, thanks for the, thanks for the time, Manny. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I don't know why we haven't done this earlier, but we've done it now, brother. It's yeah, we're gonna do it every year. <laughs> <laughs> all right, talk to you later. All right, take it easy, bro. You okay? Bye bye.